Welcome, Dr. Schenker, as the next speaker. She is a pharmacist from Basel, University of Basel, a PhD from Institute of Technology in Zurich. And after a couple of postdocs, she joined uh, Servier in 1996 and has been working on Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. And as I understand it, you are actually actively participating in several IMI projects. And today you're going to speak about your work in Pharmacog. Please. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I'm here uh, to represent uh, the Pharmacog uh, project, the, the IMI in Alzheimer's disease. Where do I push? Okay. Uh, we have already heard uh, a talk on Alzheimer's disease, so that makes it uh, easier for me to walk you through uh, some uh, raw data, like uh, how many people do we have in dementia in Europe? This is, I've taken that out of a very recent publication uh, that came out uh, early this year. And uh, we see that the Western Europe uh, has a large uh, population of dementia and is also the largest amount of money in US dollars, excuse me for not having translated it into euros. Uh, and uh, we also see that 70% of the global societal cost in dementia in the US and Western Europe uh, of the whole uh, Alzheimer's disease is there, whereas only 46% of the people with dementia live in high, uh, uh, income countries, which means that most of the money goes to the countries with high income and the others are poorly or not treated or not even diagnosed. We've already heard about the diagnosis. What do people uh, experience when they have Alzheimer's disease? They obviously have cognitive impairment. This is the first sign when they come into uh, memory clinics. Uh, there's some behavioral physiological symptoms. Uh, later on, it's depression, uh, presence of pain, uh, physical illness. This all leads uh, that these people have to be institutionalized, and that's where the great costs come from. So what can we do uh, to, uh, to ameliorate this? We have to treat much earlier to make it, it happen that these people are not uh, being institutionalized but can stay at home for a longer period, which is much more uh, cost effective than have them all institutionalized. Today, uh, after more than 20 years, we're still with only four compounds on the market. You see, I've put them up here. There are two uh, acetylcholine, three acetylcholine esterase inhibitors and the NNMD receptor antagonist memantin, which are on the market. The project Pharmacog has to deal with just these four compounds to develop a battery of tests that can then be used to uh, produce other uh, compounds, new drugs, as Tina said. We don't have any new compounds yet, but this is our, uh, our aim. What are the challenges? Uh, Alzheimer's disease uh, diagnosis, as we heard before, is very difficult. You have a very long pre-symptomatic stage where you already have a uh, high uh, A beta load. You could actually uh, identify A beta, but probably these patients would not come into the clinics. So it's very difficult to treat in a pre-symptomatic stage because we actually don't have identified these patients. We can't get to these patients. We don't know them. So the difficulty lies in there to find other biomarkers um, to know when we go to people and see uh, when we have to treat them. So when we get to the uh, early MCI stage, uh, then already um, various biomarkers are up and the symptoms are there. It's probably too late, especially with the compounds we have on the market, to treat and to be a disease modifier. We can uh, be symptomatic, which might already be a very good thing to do. Uh, I can just reiterate what Tina said before. We need public-private partnership. 
uh, this is a very complex uh, disease we have to deal with. Pharmacog is also a very ambitious and complex project. And it has been a great challenge to, uh, uh, to put all these people together. But it's again, we have the academics with some ideas, with new uh, models, uh, different models that we haven't actually been able to test through all uh, these batteries we now are, are developing to better understand what we are looking at in the disease. To know which are the animal models that are predictive of our treatment and which are not. Um, this has given us the possibility to have um, different work packages dealing with uh, new uh, uh, preclinical models which are not transgenic animals and transgenic animals and put everything together and this is backed up with a clinical work package who should then be uh, back translational. It has been a great challenge. Uh, we have some achievements uh, for now. There are novel disease markers in the, the development by uh, small uh, companies. We have actually four different small companies working on biomarkers. And uh, these have been tested on all our preclinical models, the uh, transgenic animals, and are now uh, pulled into the clinics, which also have started and are being validated. I can't say at the moment which one is going to be the biomarker for the next generation, but this is work in progress. Uh, a new thing that might actually help us to, um, pre uh, to get better reproducibility is the touch screen, which has been set up uh, also with the project NewMeds. They have uh, worked predominantly on the rat models where uh, Pharmacog has concentrated on the mice uh, going into the direction of the transgenic animals in Alzheimer's disease. Um, we have validated this um, model, this test already in visual discrimination, even in, uh, in mice, which is not very easy. But we know that this is uh, something, at least in part, translational to uh, the human settings uh, where we have the CANTAP test, which is used uh, for the humans to test for cognitive uh, impairment. We have also uh, put great effort into EEG, which is also a marker that has a great potential because it is translationable. We can use it in all animal models. We can go to the human uh, setting. And again, the technology has evolved to, the, to such an extent that we now are able to better measure in the human being and in animals and have better algorithms to analyze. Now, this has been validated through all our different um, animal models which contain the mouse, the rat, the octodon, which is a diurnal uh, animal, and the mouse lemur, which is the smallest uh, lemur that exists. And both octodon and lemurs actually develop a spontaneous Alzheimer's disease, which was part of our investigation to see whether we can come up with a new model which is not transgenic because uh, remember transgenic animals only represent actually 1% of the Alzheimer's disease population because most of our Alzheimer's disease patients are not familial Alzheimer's uh, patients but uh, sporadic ones and probably not very well represented by uh, genetic models. So this is uh, the way we are going uh, forward. There has also been uh, put great effort into structural MRI where already three of the transgenic mouse strains have been analyzed we have found some, uh, some differences. Now, these are going to be put into longitudinal studies to test the drugs that we know, but also uh, the drugs 
that are not on the market. And I think that there's also a great achievement of these public-private partnership that we were capable as FPA partners to put in our drugs that haven't reached the market, to test on our battery that we now have established in long, longitudinal studies for disease modifier, but also trying this test battery for our symptomatic treatment. Um, uh, several companies have been willing to give us their compounds that haven't reached the market but were stopped in phase two, phase three, or uh, other stages, which I think is actually a great achievement. And then uh, we're gonna try to back translate from our clinical studies which have started, uh, this is a longitudinal study in uh, MCI patients, which has been quite difficult to recruit because um, as you might well be aware, it is very difficult to recruit MCI patients for a longitudinal study over three years without any Alzheimer's treatment because we are competing with a lot of other Alzheimer's disease uh, trials. But this is something that is going on. Um, uh, we keep our fingers crossed that we get all the patients involved into this uh, trial to get this data to back translate to our uh, animal studies. The remaining challenge is, is the treatment. We need treatment. Uh, most of us would like more disease modifying treatments. This is uh, the word of today. But I think symptomatic treatments, symptomatic treatments with less side effects than ones we know would be very welcome and better or an uh, earlier diagnosis and better understanding the disease on a molecular level. And uh, I think. Uh, with this, I thank uh, all the partners, which is a uh, large group, for all the work that I have put into this uh, pharmacop. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. I mean, you really stick to time here. Don't I? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, questions, comments? Please. Uh, my name is Isabel Rozas. I come from Trinity College, Dublin. My question is, um, you have mentioned that you are using compounds that are not in the market. Uh, and the same question applies to, to TINE, basically. But all the, the compounds you use follow the same uh, mechanism of action. Wouldn't that bias the effectivity of the animal model? Uh, no, the ones we are now testing are not of this mechanism of action that we have used. There are others. Yeah, the, same. the same goes for, for some of the drugs that we've actually tested in our preclinical models. They are of different mode of actions, but they're of course not novel, novel. I mean, they haven't come out of, of the platform, but they are different mode of actions. Most of the, the antidepressants that are known follow the monoamine theory, so uh, it would be interesting to see other uh, antidepressants that follow different mechanisms of action. I agree, I agree. Other questions or comments? 